it's just about nine o'clock. We're inside the compound of the Corners building here in Toronto near Keel and Highway 401. If you're watching this right now, you know, we are about to uh, move the body of Greg Purcella from the Corners building to the funeral home. With me in my truck right now is one of his uh, colleagues, one of his platoon mates, Evan Nohara. No, Nohara. 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 Evan Nohara. And um, we are going to be moving down the 401 westbound to Highway 400. We are going to be moving uh, on the 400 northbound through, right through to Barrie, exiting at Duckworth. If there is anyone that wants to go out and pay respects to uh, Greg Pricella as we pass by, uh, we are moving now and there's the door. It just opened. We are now about to uh, start our uh, our procession. Greg Pricella is uh, right in front of us. And uh, Evan, you worked with him. You were uh, close with him. This is just an unbelievably devastating time. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts as well. Sure. Um, well, I'll start off just by saying that, you know, Greg is, Greg was just about the most decent human being out there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to say that for someone, anyone who's fallen, anyone who's a close friend or, or whatever, but um, I don't think it could be said enough, you know, the magnitude of, of the man that he was, the kind of person that he was, the way he respected people, not only in the office, but also the people that he served in the community. It was very clear that he wanted to be a cop for, you know, to serve and protect. Like that was his mission, that was his goal. He dreamt about it as a kid um, and worked tirelessly his entire life until he could achieve that. And you know, look at this right now. This is just incredible. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's kind of funny. So Greg and I would often have, you know, those, those late night shift conversations. And uh, the two of us, we, we had a lot of, of commonalities. We shared a lot in common. Um, probably the biggest one was, was, was just our, our values and our faith. Greg and I both being uh, practicing Catholics and We'd often get into conversations about about life and death, the afterlife, what that yeah. all entails, living a good life, right? Being a strong moral character, and uh, one of the last conversations that that I was fortunate enough to have with Greg, uh, we we're talking about death, and we were talking about living a good life, and Greg had said to me, he said. He's like, you know, he's like, I think, I think the real testament of someone who's, who's lived an honorable life is, is how many people show up to their, their funeral, to their wake. Yeah. And, uh, all I can think of right now with literally the glowing show of support from not only the law enforcement side, fire EMS but also the people in the community is like like you know Greg look look around you know from, from wherever you are I'm yeah. confident he's <laughs> he is in a better place but it's like you've done well kid you know yeah I didn't have the privilege of knowing him you know I've heard so much about him in the last few days and you know his uh, his athleticism his uh, life up in Barrie yeah. with his family, a beautiful family, and you know his dream to be a police officer as a special constable yeah. down at Queens Park, uh, and and then finally he he made his dream, right? Yeah, you know Greg. Greg was, you know, you could call him the quintessential cop, right? The kind of person that you'd want to hire. Um, yeah, fitness was was a massive part of his life. Sure that he was fit 
active for duty, not only for his own his own health, but also wanting to uh, be available, you know, officer safety wise for his for his fellow officers. He was uh, you know, highly skilled in wrestling, in jiu jitsu. Um, was willing to take up any kind of any kind of challenge that there was, like fitness wise. Well, I, I saw the videos of him uh, wrestling with his, his coach there in some of those tournaments. You know, he was a fit, athletic, uh, you know, good-looking guy. That was yeah. uh, <laughs> just when you think of what an officer uh, would be like, it was that kind of a person that uh, oh, that I envisioned. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Again, you know, like the he he didn't he didn't turn down any kind of challenge. Um, I shared with the commissioner the other night, but uh, I, I had set up as a New Year's resolution this past year. I was like, I was never never a runner, but I was like, God, ah, you know what? I want to get more into this. I was like, I'm gonna sign up for a marathon. And September comes around, and still hadn't done one. And I was like, Oh my gosh! Like, like I gotta I gotta get on board with this. I gotta. <laughs> Got to find a marathon, and so I find one like seven weeks out, and I called Greg because we worked out quite a bit together, and you know he had been running only a little bit, and I said, hey man, like, what are your thoughts? Like, you wanna you wanna train for this with me? And immediate answer yeah. was yes, hundred percent. Like no problem. Yeah. Like I got you, brother. Uh, we're just coming up to Shepherd Avenue right now, Highway 400 northbound. Uh, the first overpass is incredible. Yeah. Take a look. Thank you for everyone who is set up here. This is an absolutely beautiful sight. It's amazing. Um, as we uh, transition up to Finch, 407, Steels are all underpasses. Uh, the next overpass would likely be Langstaff, Bass Pro, uh, Major Mac, Teston Road. You know, it'll it'll likely be a very uh, uh, moving uh, tribute. There's people here on the side of the road here in some of these industrial uh, complexes, knowing that we're here, uh, knowing that Greg is uh, making his way to his family who are waiting for him right now at the funeral home in Barrie and uh, we just want to give him all the honor that we can So he was your coach, or he was your running coach, or your athleticism. Yeah. So again, I'm uh, I'm on the Highway 400 right now. I have uh, Evan Norara yep. with me, uh, who was one of his uh, uh, platoon mates at Haldeman Detachment, and working. How long have you been on the on the road, Evan? I've I've been. Uh, this is my fifth year. Fifth year. So so, tell me <laughs> tell me when uh, when uh, Greg showed up. You know, as a rookie, yeah. you know, obviously ready to go, ready you know, to go. enthusiastic, I'm sure. You know, what are some of the, uh, you know, what are some memories you have of him showing up on uh, on shift? I understand you also uh, actually assisted in his coaching. Yeah. Uh, and I know, you know, let, let's talk about his, his er, first days, his early days. Sure. Um, you know, Greg, <laughs> all he always showed up in incredibly early, right? And uh, I remember the first day he walked in, and you know he's he's a very humble guy, and he was you know a little bit on the quiet side, but you could just tell he sort of carried himself in uh, in a very confident manner. You know, yeah. he was he was quiet, but he was confident. I remember kind of thinking like, okay, like what is this guy all about? And a couple of us creeped out his name on, on, on Google, <laughs> figured out that he was, you know, like a high-level wrestler. And oh, so he's on Google, is he? Oh, okay. yeah. There's some, there's some good photos of that. Okay. Uh, put put one of them as, as the background of, of his computer the one day. But uh, I remember being like, oh, 
okay, like, there's more to this guy than meets the eye, you know, he's, like, like not even a threat of arrogance whatsoever, and, and I, you know, just kind of start getting them talking a little bit, they're like, hey, you know, like, uh, see, so you're into, like, wrestling, right, and he's like, yeah, he's just like, oh, oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, doesn't even, like, try to elaborate or, doesn't even say like you know I was I was actually like really good just so mild mannered so humble so professional in that way and um, yeah I, I I got the pleasure of, of having him ride along with me for for the first little bit you know we uh, learn learn the roads for him together you know which uh, was a little bit of a struggle at first but. Ended up uh, helping him figure out, you know, which way was north. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, a struggle that we all have. You move to a new, a new county, and you're like, gosh, like, where am I, right? Yeah. And so he's, he was learning to navigate, and, and it'd be funny watching him sometimes get turned around. But he was so coachable. He was so trainable. Where it's like, you know, hey, this is a tip. Like I use these points of reference to figure out, you know, my bearings to to, to get my directions. And he just was like, okay, like, Roger that. And would pick up on it. And it's like, anything that you told him to do, like, he wanted to do that. Yeah. And he <laughs> would do it. Right? Uh, and it's like, and then he'd ask, like, hey, like, what did you say again? Like, how, how can I do that again? And um, pleasure, pleasure working with him. Yeah. Pleasure being able to coach him. We're just coming up to Langstaff here right now. And as you've seen the overpasses, uh, again, just an incredible showing of support from uh, other first responders, emergency responders, the public, signs painted and, and uh, hanging there, flags, you know, just uh, a beautiful, a beautiful you know, sight to see. Uh, officers here lined up on the, on the highway and paramedics as well, I see. Honoring the life of Greg Pacella. We're just coming up to uh, uh, Rutherford, I believe, and we're gonna continue up the 400 all the way to Barry. We will be exiting at, at Duckworth. Uh, Evan is with me right now. He is uh, one of, uh, of uh, Greg's uh, platoon mates, and you see the Canadian flags and, and the officers all lined up there at attention. It is a beautiful sight to see. Flashing lights in the distance as, um, as we approach uh, Bass Pro Mills right now, and then uh, Major Mac and Rutherford. You know, it's a it's a cloudy day here, which is maybe fitting for uh, the mood that we we have. Again, seeing all the flashing red and blues here. You know, as we uh, roll back uh, and see the procession behind us, I'm just gonna fall back a little bit and. You know, let's uh, let's keep talking about sure. Greg and you know when you see his smile on the pictures, it, it's such an infectious smile. A hero in life, a huge sign there. It's beautiful. He was a hero. He was a hero. Well, what I'll actually say about uh, well, there's you know the now famous photo of of him, his smile, and a horse. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What was with the horse? So uh, that was that was a paid duty at the Caledonia Fair. Uh, I was very thankful to have to have worked that paid duty with them. And probably not a lot of people know this, but Greg absolutely hated that photo. <laughs> that it was taken. <laughs> he he was so furious when that got posted. Oh really? Oh, she was like, this is embarrassing. And I was like, ah, Greg, it's not that big of a deal. It's okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, like just kind of like a, a, a private guy in that way. Didn't want himself to be like blasted on social media too much. And was like, ah, oh, they, they have me with a, a horse, right? Like, what is this all about? But A man and a steed, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, but, but but it speaks like like that's who Greg was, you know, he strong guy a man's man in every way and yet like just the most gentle soul right and you you see that smile and it's 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 permeating like it hits you you're like wow like, 
that's a guy that I know that I can trust and I want I want that kind of guy serving my community and he upheld that hope like yeah. that oath to the nth degree you know like without any reservation whatsoever um, yeah wasn't a fan of that photo <laughs> <laughs> well again as uh, we can pass here under uh, Major Mac uh, there's some construction here but there's still officers standing here as we uh, make our way through Vaughan we're out of Toronto now heading up to Barrie uh, and as you see the procession behind me you know, we're going to just move over into the uh, left lane here so many uh, people have come out to uh, pay respects and again thank you if you are watching and following along here uh, on social media if you're not able to uh, be in person uh, this is just such a a horrible situation that we have to deal with again and it's happened too much this year too much yeah. this was Greg's first year he was just uh, yeah, I, finalized finished his probation I uh, I handed him his final evaluation that day you did I did I said you know congratulations buddy like welcome to the team um, take a read through it you know tell me what you think of, of, <laughs> of your evaluation if if you think anything's out of line or, or, <laughs> or whatever but that aside, like, congrats, and, yeah. and uh, happy to have you with us, brother. <laughs> and So what, what were his strong points? Or? Oh, well, I mean, his physicality, first of all, you know, like, um, you, you always knew if you were at a dicey call that he had your back. Like, you, you had complete confidence in that, and um, he wasn't afraid to, to, to step in when, when, when you needed a hand, you know? Yeah. An amazing team player again like hey Greg uh, I've got this bail package or you know I've got I've got this brief I gotta assemble and put together like do you mind helping me out with this can you can you can you do this for me and he's like dude no problem Roger that yeah like I got you and then just his presence in the office you know <laughs> like Everyone likes to partake in a little office gossip here and there, <laughs> and and you know one of the day, uh, one one day someone's saying like, "Hey Greg, you know, because just the most polite guy, like, what are your thoughts on, on on this situation?" And he's just like, you know, he's like, I I really don't like to partake in office gossip, <laughs> like just just a gentleman in that way. Oh really? So, Good for him. So professional. You know, never spoke poorly about anyone. Just looked for people's strong suits. Um, him and I had had, had a call with a, a, a victim of human trafficking. And it was it was earlier on in his probation, um, and so you know I'm kind of debriefing it with him and, and asking him, okay, like what are your thoughts on this? And just the most empathetic response towards that victim you know where he's like gosh he's like I can't imagine how you can get into like like that kind of lifestyle and, 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 and the trauma that must uh, come from that yeah. and he just he, he wanted to know how he could help those people like that was that was his, his biggest attribute was he literally was you know a servant leader yeah and um, that beautiful testament to to the oath of a police officer yeah. in every way. Yeah, we're just going by the Northbound Service Center here, uh, King City, you know, officers all lined up here and the members of the public lined up here on the off ramps. Uh, some of the overpasses, I see red lights flashing off in the distance here as well. Um, you know, again, just a, a beautiful tribute. Sarah, this is 5 Tango 007, on TAC 2. Uh, I'm just going to switch back to 38. Um, uh, my phone has been ringing, but my phone is, is occupied, so I'm not sure if there's any messages that need to be relayed to me. If, uh, if that's needed, uh, Willem, can you advise? Yeah, and Willem copies as well. Center 5 Tango 007 in the procession here on Norman 
Taco 2, just jumping onto 38 right now. Uh, there have been a few phone calls from um, officers. If there's something that needs to be relayed to me, can uh, they please uh, either advise uh, through Will and Flink or myself on Taco 2? <laughs> And FYI, the the procession right now is Highway 400 northbound, just passing King Road northbound, en route to Barrie. Yeah. Sorry about that, just uh, making sure we're all together here. Yeah. So again, as, uh, as we you know, come through to uh, uh, York region, you know, more rolling hills. Maybe this is a little more familiar territory, countryside, uh, yeah. like Haldeman. Yeah. 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 And so, um, you know, you know, a, a typical shift, a typical day in Haldeman, your platoon, your crew, what, what did a day look like for you? Uh, usually, well, we get in roughly at the same time, kind of chit-chat in the locker room a little bit. Um, I usually greet... Okay, we'll take late one here. Uh, I usually greet... Yeah, GPS is uh, fine, just taking all three lanes, so we're good. He liked to wear that... that Perfect, thanks. That fluffy winter hat. Oh! You know, yeah. the old... Oh, the old, the old fur hat, hat. Yeah. yeah. So, uh... I'd always just call him comrade, and uh, like comrade, how are you? And he's like, oh, good, <laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah. So, uh, his background is Polish. It's I, Polish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, his whole family's from Poland. Okay. Um, very passionate about that too, you know. But yeah, we get in, kind of uh, just you know ask ask how uh, how previous day was or whatever. If it was starting a new block. Have our coffee, you know. Look at the board, see what's going on. Figure out when we were working out during the day or something. Oh, okay. You know, schedule it in and, and be like, okay, who wants this time slot? Who wants that time slot? Okay, make sure we get it in. Um, and then, yeah, just go to calls together. I, I, you know, was lucky enough to be able to go to to a good number of calls with Greg. Um, at, at the beginning, having him doubled up with me for a while, yeah. and then, you know, towards the end, and just trying to get his evaluation all situated. Um, but yeah, we were just kind of. Well, yeah, he leans on you for advice. You've got the experience, you know, a little bit, you know, and um, but again, he, he brought a lot to the table too, and and he would ask me questions of like. You know why did you choose to do that? And I was like, oh gosh, I have to think about that sometimes. You know why? Why did I choose to do that? And and he wasn't afraid to to offer his own input and be like, you know what? What if I was to go and respond this way at this call? Yeah. Right. Uh, just he, he showed a lot of initiative in that way. Yeah. So, you know, you can see the procession here, uh, Greg Priscilla uh, in the hearse, uh, sadly, at the front of this procession. Um, let's just talk a little bit about who these uh, vehicles are, who's driving here. Uh, Evan with me right now, he's one of uh, Greg's uh, platoon mates from Haldeman County and uh, also one of the pallbearers. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and the other vehicles here as well, we have the rest of the pallbearer uh, team as well as his colleagues from his shift, right? Yeah, it, exactly. Um, just a bunch of us from Haldeman, you know, as a, as a fairly young platoon, uh, we were all fairly close together, yeah. you know, it's more, just, just the age disparity, you know, there was five or six of us all within a year apart. And so naturally, wow. naturally okay. you just, you kind of form that, that that bond because you're from a similar from the same generation yeah you know similar interests all of that and uh so so yeah every everyone on our platoon at least is is, is here because we had such a bond with greg you know every everyone here could speak just how highly regarded he was in our platoon at our county all of that. scott and ryan just 
just FYI, there's a pickup truck that's looking like it's trying to catch up to our convoy here. Maybe a Freedom Convoy member. It's a Ford F-150. Just keep eyes out for it there. Sorry. Is it behind us or in front? No, it's behind you trying to catch up. I just got a call about it. Don't know what the intentions are, but just keep an eye out. Yeah, 10-4, there's about a dozen TPS members behind us. So I think uh, he's going to have a hard time getting past them. So again, this is the uh, procession right now of uh, Greg Prichella, uh in the hearse here uh, next to me, Highway 400 northbound. Uh, we are just uh, coming up here to, uh, I believe it's uh, Aurora Road, and uh, heading north uh, towards uh, Barrie, just coming through uh, Oak Ridges and uh, you know, Schaumburg and Aurora. We have... Uh, the family of Greg waiting at uh, the funeral home where we're att attending to uh, right now in Barrie. I know uh, the OPP commissioner Thomas Creek is there as well. Uh, we had uh, uh, you know, really a, a very moving uh, send off from the Corners building as we departed. Uh, a great showing of support from uh, first responders, you know, lining the road in front of the uh, Corners building in Toronto. And here we are at Aurora Road again, and just a beautiful tribute of, of uh, fire, fire vehicles, police, EMS, all standing here in attention. And I expect that we'll uh, continue to see this as we move forward, getting closer to Barrie. Barrie was uh, Greg's hometown, or hometown, I guess, was it? Or that's where he grew up? Yeah, he, he went to school there. there. And as we come down the, uh, the ridge here, see again uh, flashing lights in the distance and uh, we're live streaming this right now on uh, several platforms uh, have you uh, are you able to connect with anyone just to make sure that the feeds all right yeah they're all they're all seen they're all seen it okay so you know Greg in the uh, in the hearse here next to me you know, as he's being escorted with full honors and the respect of the people that are lining the overpasses here, again, is beautiful. His closest uh, work colleagues are in the procession along with him. Evan right now is with me in this vehicle as we uh, ride alongside and bring uh, Greg home. The uh, platoon obviously devastated. The community is devastated. The organization is devastated. You know. We're <laughs> going to say we're, we're very sad because uh, Greg, Greg brought in pierogies on several occasions. <laughs> For, uh, a very Polish oh, thing. Very, and, and authentic. authentic. Authentic Polish pierogies. pierogies. Okay. Very good. So we, have, well, we, we certainly have to give a shout out to his mom, Mrs. Bruschella. Because Greg would commission her to make him for us, <laughs> and it was like a fight to see who could even get them. You know, wow. like last time he brought in like two massive trays, and they were gone like within minutes, like just minutes. You know, and everyone would always be like, "Hey, like when's the next like the next batch coming in?" You know? Well, you can't go wrong with uh, oh, pierogies. Little onions, little sour cream. Yeah. Little bacon bits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Greg still spent a lot of time up in Barrie, I guess, on his uh, days off, or was uh, where did he spend a lot of his time? Yeah, he almost every almost every week he'd go back to Barrie. Yeah. Uh, you know, Greg, from what I understand, was very close with his family. Yeah. All of his siblings, his mother, his dad. He's got a brother who lives in Poland uh, full time, um, and it was actually it was, it was just in October where, where Greg was able to go and spend a month there. So family was always at the forefront of his brain, you know, like just want to have a family of his own one day, even just like even just.
just like his his perspective on like uh, dating. You know, we we'd ask Greg like, hey, you know, like uh, you're gonna find a girl, and he's like, ah, oh, he's, like, he's like, it's got to be the right one. <laughs> you know, he's like, it's got it's got to be a girl I could live a lifetime with, kind of thing, right? So family was always always what he did, and you know, he had his his jujitsu uh, gym that he went to up there, and obviously went to high school. And everything. Tango level seven, tango level seven, go ahead. So sitting on the URR desk here, we've got a call in uh, reporting that the OPP vehicle that's live streaming the first session. Uh, it says their microphone's on to be heard speaking over the air from the, on the radio station CP24. Just want to make sure this wasn't on purpose or accidental temper. Yeah, nope, fully intentional. So I'm uh, I'm here. Uh, we are live streaming. We're live streaming on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, just here update. We just lost Canal uh, We are live streaming on Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and uh, there may be media as well taking these uh, feeds. Uh, we are talking. Uh, uh, this is the procession of Greg Priscilla. Uh, we are moving from uh, the Corners Building in Toronto up to the funeral home in Barrie. And uh, with me is Evan, one of Greg's uh, shift mates. And just wanted to, uh, you know, if people that are following along and listening, maybe just hearing a little, a few stories about Greg, uh, his life, his policing career. Uh, he graduated from um, police college and Provincial Police Academy back in February of last year, yeah. and uh, prior to that, he was also a special constable yeah. uh, with uh, Queens Park. Queens Park, yeah. and uh, he worked uh, there for uh, several years. Yeah, he did the Army Reserves uh, for a little bit as well. You know, just want to take every step he could to just have a you know the experience he needed to become a cop. Yeah, a good cop. Yeah. Well, it looks like he uh, he had all the uh, knowledge, skills, abilities, competencies, yeah. and uh, traits to be a great officer, yeah. and uh, and he's there to serve, as we all are here to serve. And here we are at Highway 80, uh, Fifth Line. I'm sorry. And um, uh, again, a, a beautiful showing of support from uh, local fire services with aerial truck, you know, up ahead. Uh, Highway 88, I think, is just in the distance here. Again, the platoon uh, shift mates are all in in formation. Some debris on the left side here. In, in formation yeah. behind uh, behind Greg. I I do want to give a, a little bit of a shout out because I know only our platoon can can really be here to to escort Greg to to the funeral home and to his family. But um, you know, there's there's so many people I can speak certainly on behalf of all the members at Haldeman who, who knew Greg and loved Greg, but also um, our dispatchers who, you know, particularly the, the dispatchers and call takers who were working on the 27th, um, you know, they, they did their best to, to take care of Greg, make sure that he made it home safely at the end of every shift with their status checks and, you know, I can't commend that. A lot of just coming up to Simcoe Road to Haiti. And, and what they did, and I know that, that they would want to be here right now with us, um, but they, they certainly deserve, you know, uh, some of our respect for that. Absolutely. Um, there's just, uh, again, so much love and appreciation for uh, the life of Greg, and, and as we continue to travel up Highway 400, passing Highway 88, uh, again, uh, a massive uh, showing of uh, respect and honor on the overpass, flags flying, officers, the public standing at attention. Oh, uh, there's the York uh, helicopter off to the right side here as well, doing a fly, fly past. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. You know, I can I can only hope that that Greg 
Drake's death as, oh gosh, as heartbreaking as it is for myself, for everybody here, for the OBP, for the members of the community, I just, you know, I can only hope and pray that, that this isn't in vain. I know for myself, I see some kind of promise out of this, some kind of good that could come. And I hope, as the commissioner had spoke before about bail reform, about changes that need to be made within our legal system to ensure that events like this don't happen again. Yeah. I know Greg, Greg talked about that himself. You know, we'd, we'd sit down and have long talks, particularly on night shifts, about how to make our streets safer, starting with things like bail reform and keeping bad people out of communities to keep them safe, you know. Our mission within the OPP is safe communities and secure Ontario, and, and it has to start from there with ensuring that things like this don't happen again, especially especially to the innocent. And Greg is... He's as innocent as they come. He's, he's a sacrificial lamb, you know, if, if, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Well, you know, this should not be happening. And, you know, he, he vowed to serve the province of Ontario, the people of Ontario, and he paid with his life. And uh, we honour and respect him for his commitment to public service and, and thank him for what he's done. Uh, he has made the world a better place in the work that he's accomplished. And we will continue to do the work that he started and that has been ongoing for so long. And we will continue to do that to keep our community safe. That that's, what, that's what our role is. We're here to uh, you know, make our communities as safe as they can so we can enjoy you know, the freedoms that, that we have. And, you know, far too early in his career, a year into his career, and um, cut short. And uh, here we are with him right now, Greg Prischella, you know, in the hearse, traveling northbound Highway 400, approaching Highway 89 now, coming in towards Barrie. He was killed in Haldeman while he was responding to a car in the ditch. Uh, yeah. A pretty simple call. Um, a routine call that we get, you know, all the time. Like, it's... You really don't think... I, I know we're always supposed to be alert and aware, but it's like you do that kind of call a hundred times and it's so innocuous. Yeah. Right? At least seemingly. And, you know, Greg, it's like knowing him, he's just looking to go to that saying hey is everybody okay here like you were just involved in a car accident yeah and then to think that he's brutally taken away from us in cold blood is just yeah and it's horrific it's, yeah. it's angering you know um and again like i said before I, I i can only pray that that there's some good that that comes from this Again, our, my deepest condolences to the Priscilla family who are right now at the funeral home waiting for Greg's arrival uh, as we bring him as we bring him home yeah. uh, surrounded by his friends and colleagues giving him the honor that he deserves and the life that he lived and the sacrifice that he uh, endured in, by losing his life you know just an incredible man with so much more to give and, and cut down far too fast you know a grey day here on the roads a grey day for everybody who knew and loved Greg and as we uh, come into the town of Innisville a community that was also devastated by tragedy not long ago when two of their officers were uh, struck down as well. And, and not long before that, another Toronto police officer was shot. And, you know, the 
senselessness of these uh, situations. You know, we wear body armor, we wear our uniform with pride, uh, we have equipment to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves, and to keep our community safe. And um, you know, tragically, it wasn't enough, and uh, Greg lost his life doing what he, I guess, dreamt to do for his entire life, right? Yeah, I, I, I spoke with his family at the hospital, and, you know, Greg had shared with me in the past, saying how, he's like, I think this is an honorable profession, he's like, I'm happy to be a part of it, and when I spoke with his mom at the hospital, um, and, and God bless her right now, because I can't imagine what that must be like to, to lose your son, especially a son as good as Greg. Yeah. But, you know, she said from, like, day one, like, kindergarten, um, wanted to be a cop. Really? And just, like, that was his, that or, like, the military. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like he wanted to get back in some kind yeah. of way. Did he talk about his time in the military? Did he tell stories? Yeah, we're just coming up to 89. He, uh, so... He was, I think, part-time reservist. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I believe believe that's the case. Yeah. And he he saw it as just a great opportunity to um, expand his knowledge and experience. You know, get a taste for it, see if it was right for him. And he really ended up feeling like like policing was the path that he was meant to go on. Yeah. Um, and you know, even even for such a short career, it's like. He painted one hell of a picture, you know, he really did. Yeah. This is Highway 89, again, look at this uh, overwhelming show of support here. Uh, members of uh, policing communities, OPP, South Simcoe, we're getting into Barrie as well, and we will uh, see a Barrie City Police as well. Uh, and we saw the York Regional uh, helicopter fly overhead uh, and do a fly past uh, in front of the procession. Uh, a very fitting uh, show of, uh, of honor. Yeah. Well, I guess all his time, Greg, uh, again, uh, people joining. Uh, this is the, the procession of uh, Greg Prischella. He was killed earlier this week in Haldeman County responding to a uh, vehicle in the ditch, which is a call that we respond to all the time. All the time. Every day. Regular basis. Uh, we just came through a, a pretty significant winter storm. There was cars and ditches everywhere. And uh, as Greg approached, I don't know all that happened, but I know he was his life was, was cut short, you know, while trying to help a member of his community. Yeah. And uh, there are two people in custody right now charged in his death. And that is going to be before the courts. But right now we're here to honor Greg. His family, again, are waiting to receive him at the funeral home in about 20 minutes. Uh, we're approaching Barry. And we will be exiting at Duckworth Street and uh, heading back towards St. Vincent. And um, the uh, procession, the members here in the procession, including Evan, who's sitting with me right now, uh, driving up 400 uh, will be one of the pallbearers that will uh, be there at Greg's casket at, the, at his side as they uh, take him from the hearse and bring him into the funeral home and as the funeral arrangements continue to be uh, prepared uh, a funeral, a police funeral a family funeral is expected to uh, happen uh, mid next week and, and again here we are at another overpass and I see uh, all the uh, people standing on the bridge at attention I hear horns blasting as we're coming south as people are paying paying honor and respect to uh, Greg Prischella and you can see all the vehicles lined up fire trucks tow trucks passenger vehicles flags flying Thank you. It is a beautiful sight, and I know the family and Evan and the other shift uh, members here. I'm 
scripture, take comfort, or tell me your thoughts as, as you see this outpouring of affection. You know, it's it's certainly good to see. Um, you know, in the, in the past few years, there's been a lot of, of you know, anti-police movements, which can, can sometimes be discouraging for us. Yeah. Because I think far and wide, the vast majority of us just literally want to protect our fellow community members and, and, and serve them, right? Like yeah. that's we've got that in our DNA. We want it we want to do that. And you know, sometimes you can think like, gosh, are are we appreciated for our job and, and so to see this, to not only see first responders. There's something big coming up here right now as well. I just uh, I just want to take time to yeah take this in. I, I don't know. I, I see an overpass. I see a flag and I see ladders. Uh, and again, flags flying, people paying uh, paying respects here. Uh, it is uh, yeah. a, a beautiful sight. To, to see members of the public not even involved in, in, in first response at all. To see them stopped on the side of the road, literally getting out of their vehicle, you know, saluting at certain times to a fallen officer. Um, that means the world to us, and I know that means the world to Greg. Yeah. I'm sure it means the world to his family, too. And we really do just want to... We want to serve, man. Like, that's all we want to do. That's all Greg wanted to do. And so thank you all for your support, for your kind words, for your letters, for flowers that were dropped off at our detachment. You know, for people who didn't even know Greg... Um, that certainly instills some kind of, of, of hope for us, and we're eternally grateful for that. Tell me about Greg's family. Uh, his mom and dad, I think his dad and brother came in yesterday. Yeah, so his, his brothers and sisters? He's got, I believe he has two, two brothers, an older and a younger, and, and then a younger sister as well. And then, of course, of course mom and dad. Um, yeah. All, all very Polish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all very Polish. You know, Greg, Greg gave himself uh, his own nickname of Polish Power. Polish Power. Oh, well, he was a force, you know. <laughs> he was. And, uh, but just good people, you know, even in, in, in the first meeting with them. Um, as difficult of a time that it would be for them, you can... That line just coming up to Nestle Beach Road. Yeah, you get a grasp of, of the kind of person someone is. And I think especially in our line of work where you deal with, with every walk of life, every demographic, you, you kind of get like a sixth sense just by the initial gaze into someone's eyes, what kind of person they're like. And you could tell that they were just, you know, loving, good people in the way that Greg spoke of them, about all of his siblings, about his parents. Like, I mean, heck, if, yeah. if Greg came from them, they're obviously good because... <laughs> He was as good as they come, you know, and, and you're not just born that way, like you're, you're taught it, you're, you know, you're parented, you're reared from yeah. a, a, a young age, and um, it's very obvious that they're just a, a, a beautiful group of people. Yeah, uh, salutes here, uh, Barry City Police just uh, coming in behind us as well as we enter the city of Barry. Uh, we're just crossing IBR again, uh, uh, Greg Pichella in the hearse here as we uh, are taking him right now from the Corners building to the funeral home in Barrie, to his home. And uh, as family are waiting his arrival, which will just be a few more minutes, we uh, enter the city of Barrie, which was where he grew up, where he went to school, uh, where he dreamt about being a police officer. And as he you know, moved through his uh, school years, athletics, as a wrestler, uh, joining the military reserves, and then also then moving into a career in law enforcement, becoming a special constable at Queens Park, working down there for several years, yep. and finally getting the nod, applying to uniform, being an officer. And he took he took a pay cut from Queens Park. Yeah. To become a recruit. You know, like he's like, no, he's like, that's that's what I want to do. That's he's what like, I want to be. 
even if it requires a little bit of extra sacrifice in, in, in the meantime, it's like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, here we are, Barry. Wait, we're entering the city limits of Barry, and Greg, you're almost home. And uh, a, a beautiful uh, tribute here as well on the overpass here at McKay Road. Signs that have been posted. Yeah, beautiful. It's about an hour's drive from Toronto to Barrie. Greg is getting the uh, most honorable escort that we can that we can offer. And uh, thank you to everyone in the community that have uh, shown support, expressed condolences. A funeral will be planned for next week. This is uh, certainly a, a, a heartbreaking time for the OPP family and law enforcement as a whole, but especially on the Priscilla family. As family, mom and dad, siblings, friends, relatives are all waiting to uh, greet Greg home. And, and sadly, in the worst possible way, uh, in a funeral procession. Just coming up to Maple View here right now. And yeah, London just at Maple View. We will be traveling on Highway 400 through Barrie. We will be exiting at Duckworth and then uh, turning towards St. Vincent to the funeral home where his family are uh, awaiting Greg's arrival. It has been just an absolutely devastating uh, few days since uh, tragedy happened in Haldeman. And Evan here with me, you were working that shift. You were there? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to say too much, but uh, you know, whatever it, you know, you know, I was down in Haldeman as well later that evening as we brought Greg from Haldeman up to the Corners building and now as we take him to, uh, uh, to the funeral home in Barrie and bring him home to his family. I just, I just want to hear from you. Like, just tell me some of your thoughts as we uh, come through Barry here and getting close to home. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's 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 a day that you certainly don't ever wish for 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 any officer, uh, especially someone who is, you know, even outside of work, a close friend, right? And look at this. It's oh, this is beautiful. This is. Thank you, people. Gosh. Yeah, and drones and choppers. And, um, but yeah, dude, let's talk about uh, talk about uh, Greg here. I mean, certainly happy to have been with him at that. Uh, you know, in his in his last moments. Um, yeah, it it sucks losing a buddy. You know, especially as good as him. Yeah. And. You know, I, as I've said before, and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but, you know, Greg, Greg was just such a stand-up guy. And you think of, like, the kind of guy that you want your... Just passing the road. The kind of guy that you'd want your daughter to bring home and marry. <laughs> like, like that, that is Greg in a nutshell. <laughs> like, trustworthy, respectful, professional, shredded, you know, just... Uh, fit guy like the perfect catch the perfect catch you know and um and he, he he was that way as a friend the exact person you want to have as a friend trustworthy loyal right whatever you want to start making your way right there well we get the all lines blocked devoted and i'm just so i'm so happy to see this yeah, show of support move to uh, lane two i i can only imagine that that it's warming for the family, but that Greg is just like, he's smiling down upon this right now. Yeah.
just coming into Barry here right now. We are getting close to the funeral home. Uh, we will be uh, exiting at Duckworth Street here at the north end of Barry. You know, roads are uh, are great here. You see people pulling over on the side. So we've got people on the overpasses here coming up to uh, Maple View, Bayfield. I'm sorry, Bayfield, and then uh, our next exit will be at Duckworth Street. Uh, this has been uh, the uh, the procession of uh, Greg Priscilla as uh, we've um, taken him from the Corners building in Toronto, you know, up now to the funeral home. And uh, you see the uh, overpasses here again, still lined up with uh, with community members and emergency responders here at Sunnydale, and then here at uh, at Bayfield Street, which will be the last overpass that we are going to pass under uh, before exiting to Duckworth. I suspect there will be people uh, in that area as well. Family, Mr. and Mrs. Priscilla are waiting to uh, take Greg and and this overpass again. Just beautiful uh, show of honor and respect. Thank you to everyone that came out. And this is just an absolutely heartbreaking day and time for the Priscilla family as well as the uh, you know, policing community and as a whole you know more people still standing here's uh, actually this is St. Vincent here right now one more uh, okay we'll move into uh, lane three one more um, overpass as we uh, approach Duckworth St. Vincent is where we're going to be coming back to very shortly. Just watch the car stop on the right here. For anyone that was uh, following along on the live stream, uh, thank you for uh, for following, for watching, for sharing, for commenting. I'm sure there was a lot of love expressed. Uh, you can see uh, helicopters here overhead, people standing and stopping on the highway as we now move towards uh, Duckworth, we will be exiting yeah, here. Right. And uh, Barry City Police will be assisting with uh, traffic uh, assistance here as we uh, make a left here on t from uh, the 400 onto Duckworth. And again, uh, a huge showing of, of support here. Thank you to everybody. The pallbearers, his platoon members in this procession uh, will be uh, there to uh, greet the family and to help Greg from the hearse into the uh, funeral home. K-9 units, OPP. Last vehicles off the 400. approach the funeral home, uh, Evan, who's been with me here for this journey, uh, will uh, transition as a pallbearer and will help his other uh, colleagues as they uh, take Greg from uh, the hearse to the family. Uh, we will uh, stop the live stream at that time. And again, uh, thank you for, fo for following, for watching, for sharing, for your condolences for your love. And to Greg Priscilla, rest easy. God bless you, brother. God bless you.
uh, lane two are making a right turn here. Lane two, go ahead. in life. Welcome home, Greg. Rest easy. Park on the right there, Ben, and everyone from Holden. 